Hello everybody, my name is Sabrina Wise Berry from NYU's Koran Institute, and today we're going to talk about Abel Samasin. So what is Abel Samasin? So basically, we're just going to uh, review the summation of divergent theories in general. So you may recall that there were things that we call series. Some series are finite, which might end at some specified number, like the series 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or there are some series that go on infinitely, like the series of primes, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, etc. The ones we're most interested in are infinite series. So, why are we interested in them? Well, mostly, for summation. Now the thing is, there are some infinite series that have such small elements that when an infinite amount of them are added up, they actually give you a finite number. Which might be useful if you want to know, for example, what the limit of a function approaches. So, one example of this is the inverse powers of 2. 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth etc. gives you 1. So this can be proved a multitude of ways. The most easy one is just multiplying both sides by 2 to give 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth is equal to 2. Then you'll realize that this is the same as that. So this is just equal to 1. It's not like we remove the term because we can't subtract from infinity. So then we get 1 plus 1 is 2. A statement that we innately know to be true. All right, so that's what summation in general is. So, what is able summation? Well, there are some series that we call divergent because we cannot sum them up. One very surprisingly divergent series is something known as the harmonic series, or the inverse of all the natural numbers. So 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth, etc. So this goes on and on. Now, the, an intuitive reason for why this isn't divergent which basically kind of approaches the official reason. So uh, you might want to say in official terminology that if you call this part of the sequence S1, this is S2, so on and so forth, eventually it approaches some number called K. So the limit is K approaches infinity of S of K plus 1 over SK. You want this to approach some number N such that n is less than 1. Now, the thing about the harmonic series is that this approaches exactly 1, because basically what we have over here is n plus 1 over n, which you should know is just 1 plus 1 over n. 1 over n approaches in a zero, in 0 as n approaches infinity, so that is 1 once we take the limit n approaches infinity. So, uh, that's a reason why this is not convergent. But we can find a way to sum divergent series like these. So these sums might be useful for a number of reasons in analytic number theory, which I'll cover in the next lecture. So what are the applications of these summations? So one famous one might be the Cesaro summation. So let's first talk about Grandi series. It's the series that goes like this, 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, etc. So keep swapping. So just like, for example, the limit is x approaches infinity of sine x, this does not exist. So similarly to that, this is infinitely coursing between 1 and minus 1, so it doesn't really work out. But we can use something called Cesaro summation, which is useful for a number of reasons that we'll cover in the next lecture. So the Cesaro summation 
is basically an arithmetic sum of the partial sum. An arith arithmetic mean of the partial sum. I'm sorry. So what is a partial sum exactly? Well, given the sequence S1, S2, dot, 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 SK, then the partial sum S, the partial sum function S of T is equal to the sum of all uh, elements of the sequence from n equals 1 to t, so of Sn. So one example is that S of 1 is, the, is just S1, S of 2 is S1 plus S2, and so on and so forth, progressively. So that is how the partial sum function works. So then, we're taking the arithmetic mean of the partial sum. What does that mean? Well, we still have some space over here. So the arithmetic mean of the partial sums, for example, let's call that new function, I don't know, m of t. So it's equal to the sum of all of these from let's call this variable k actually, so m of k, so k equals 1 to t, wait, no, this is t, I'm sorry, and then we divide that sum of the means by t, so it's going to be, for example, m of 3 is going to be s1 plus s1 plus s2 plus s1 plus s2 plus s3, sum of all the partial sums, divided by t, which is 3. So, this provides, of course, the normal answer whenever the partial sums approach something, which is what we call the normal which is what we call the normal convergent sum. But now, it will actually approach something for non-convergent sums as well. So for example, the partial sum function here is going to be 1, 0, 1, 0, etc. And this doesn't converge either. But let's see what happens when we take the arithmetic mean. So, uh, let's first see what happens when we just take the sum of the sums. So 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 3, and I think you can see a pattern here, which continues endlessly. Now, let's divide them by their term in the sequence. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Notice anything? One, one half. Two thirds, one half again. Three fifths, one half again. Four sevenths, one half again. But the difference this time is it's not just randomly swapping between different values. It's actually getting. It's actually getting. No, it doesn't look like that. Closer and closer to one half. So that means that we can technically say that the Cesaro sum of this sequence, one minus one plus one minus one is one half. But we haven't even discussed the evil sum this whole time. So there are some sequences that aren't even Cesaro summable. One example of those is 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5 minus 6, etc. So this is an even Cesaro sum. If you tried, you'll see that this sum actually diverges because I'm pretty sure, I don't quite remember exactly, but it has the same problem as this. Uh, every other term is 0 again and again. So, yeah, that's right. So, 
So that means that we can't really approach a good consensus over here unless we use something known as ablesum for even more divergent series. So, what is the ablesum? Finally, we're getting to the main topic. So, uh, what we first have to do is basically it's going to tell us the sum of some sequence c of k. Well, that's what my source uses, but I'm going to use s of k for notation consistency. So from k equals 1 to say, I know n. So then uh, this is basically going to find that based on this s of k times some function f with the variable being k. So, how are we going to do that? Well, it's all hinging on this one pretty hard proof. I'm going to show it to you. So, let me see. Essentially, it says that given the sum from n equals 1 to k of Sn f of n, this is equivalent to, let's see, we have S1 plus S2, etc. So it's going to be f of k times the sum Sn from n equals 1 to k as well. And then we subtract A pretty spectacular sum. So what is this actually? This is our partial sum function. So let's put that right over there. So then what do we have over here? Well we have the sum from n equals 1 to k minus 1 of f of n minus f of n minus 1 times s of n. Interesting, right? We're going to actually take that whole term again right up there. So we're going to take, yeah, what's the k? Oh, freaking heck. So, of So by the fundamental theorem of calc, it shouldn't be too hard to see that the reason it's useful to have it as a function and not just an integer sequence is that we can take the derivative. And that means that we can then use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is from n to n plus 1, f prime of t, dt. It would be pretty easy to see how that is. So that tells us that we essentially have, wait, no, this is not Sn, this is S of n, I'm sorry, capital S of n, so the partial sum function. So we get, we have the sum on the outskirts, Ugh. and n plus 1, uh, S of t, f prime of t dt, shouldn't be too hard to see that this is just going to be the integral of 1, 2 of that thing, then the integral of 2, 3 of that thing, all the way until the integral of k minus 1 to k of that thing. So shouldn't be too hard to see that it's just the integral from 1 to k of s of t, f prime of t. So combining this result and that result prompts us with the final able sum equation. So finally we get the integral from 1 to k of s of k f 
wait, f of t, f prime of t, dt. Yeah, so that's the equation of the able summation. Next time we'll cover some examples of this for the divergent series, especially 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 and so on, along with some applications of this in number theory. So I'll see you on Wednesday. Alright. So in 10 seconds summarizing this, we figured out ways to uh, find sums for divergent series that have uses in analytical number theory. So we assigned sums to divergence, and we did that through a little proof uh, through real analysis and a little bit of the fundamental theorem of calculus. And now we have this able sum equation that will help us more smoothly give an answer to this.